Well, as you know, this is my first time to be with you. And I've been fortunate that for the last 30 years, I've been invited to amazing programs. But I got to say that this by far beats anything I've ever been in. So I'm a little bit out of breath. And let me tell you why. Because when I go to a program, I look for that connection, that authentic connection. And as I met Vision and Vina and the whole Mind Valley group, I felt that connection even before I got here. And over the last couple of months, we've been getting to know each other. And one of the things that I must tell you, Vision and your team, is that you're living your message. And that, to me, is one of the greatest things that you can do. The second thing is that I want to thank you guys, because you took the time to be here with us to actually take time to nurture you. So let's give yourself a round of applause. <clears throat> All right, so let me tell you a story about Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones is one of my patients. I'm still practicing half a day a week. And uh, he came in about two months ago, and he was not feeling very well. Mr. Jones is about 75 years old. He's been a widow for over 25 years. But when he came into the office this time, he hadn't shaven. He looked like he was wearing his pajamas. And I was really busy, but I know I remember evaluating him, taking care of him, adjusting him. And then a week and a half later, two weeks later, I'm having dinner at a restaurant in Dallas with my wife. And here comes Mr. Jones, all dressed to the T, with a beautiful 20-year-old next to him. I thought maybe he went to Awesomeness Fest, but... <laughs> he gets into the restaurant, he looks at me, and he said, Dr. Mancini, I just want to thank you. And I said, Mr. Jones, what happened to you? Well, Dr. Mancini, don't you realize what you said to me has changed my life? And I said, Mr. Jones, what did I say to you? He said, you told me, have a hot mama and be cheerful. And I said, Mr. Jones, that's not what I said. I said, you have a hard murmur, so be careful. <laughs> that story is really neat, primarily because I want you to realize one thing. I may say some things that are going to inspire you, hopefully motivate you and move you towards transformation. But the most important thing is what you think about when I say it. I've gotten to the point after 30 years of attending a lot of seminars that when I take notes, I put down only the action steps that I'm going to take from the inspiration that I just received. It's been a fantastic uh, thing for me because now I can put that into my calendar and that becomes my action steps. What am I going to do? Instead of just a lot of notes that you're probably never going to see again, you're going to put in a file, and that's not really what we hear about. <laughs> but as I was talking to some of you, I realized that most of you are very strong entrepreneurs, if not all of you. And most people know me as Dr. Fab, and they see me on TV, they hear me on the radio every week. But I want to share with you some of the lessons of entrepreneurship that I've learned, because I think that will give you a foundation for us to build upon. The first one is, I grew up in a household in which there were three basic rules that my parents taught us, five boys. The first one is this, and you may want to write this down. These are really good. The first one is, if you want to be a great entrepreneur, a great successful individual in life, first thing is you got to find a need and find a solution for it. There's a lot of needs out there, but who is actually solving the problems? The second one is you do what you love to do. Never compromise what you do for the sake of money, for the sake of power, for the sake of fame because they will all be short-lived. And the third one is, find someone to pay you to do it. Most people forget that last one. So some of the lessons that I've learned through my career, the first one was, at 13 years old, we live in South America, Colombia. There's some people from Colombia, let me hear you. It's my family. <laughs> and uh, 
my mom and dad decided to take all, all of us five boys and move us to Miami, Florida. And I can tell you that for some of you, having a change like that, can you, can you raise your hand if you've had a major move like that in your life, major change? Here we are facing, at 13 years old, a new language, a new culture, new friends, new environments. But my parents told us this. They said that the most important thing is to live in what is called the world of possibilities rather than the world of probabilities. You see, their lives were very structured in South America because they had to work in their businesses for their parents. One was in white flour and uh, pastas and soaps and olive oil, and the other one was in real estate. My mom and dad wanted us to have anything we wanted as long as we applied ourselves. So I want you to live in the world of possibilities as an entrepreneur because that's what I train myself to do. When I hear people that says, oh, that's never been done before, that's a very good sign. Because if you have the idea, that means you're the one to make it happen. Would you agree? Yes. Okay. The second one was the fact that after we moved to Miami, I had a dream at 17 that I wanted to be a doctor. I thought that was going to be a medical doctor. And then I went and got accepted at the highest uh, pre-med program in the South at the University of Dallas. Here I am doing well in school. I'm working as a volunteer in two hospitals. I've decided I want to be a neurosurgeon. And I have a car accident. Car accident sends me to the hospital. The orthopedic doctor in the hospital says, I can give you some painkillers. I can give you some anti-inflammatories. But you should really go see my chiropractor. Now, I'd never heard the word chiropractic before, so I just thought it was a specialty in medicine. I went into that office, and my life was changed. Because for the first time, I was introduced to the power of the body healing from the inside out. The fact that that doctor was not necessarily going to be managing my symptoms, but actually allowing my body to be properly aligned so this nervous system, this brain of ours, can function the way it was meant to function. I interviewed 62 chiropractors in six months, and I decided to go to chiropractic school instead of medical school. So the second lesson I want to share with you is that sometimes unconventional is the way to go. It has the biggest payoff. If you're trying to follow your success based on the track records of other people, you will never be great. You will never be extraordinary. But if you look for that unconventional path, you will always find something great, especially if you feel very certain about what you're doing. The next one is, all of a sudden, then now I'm going to chiropractic school. My parents have always paid for our school, and I get a phone call two weeks before I register at school. My mom says, your dad made some oil investments about two years ago. We've lost everything. Over $9 million of an investment, they lost everything. So she says to me, while we refigure here what we're going to do with the businesses and sell them or whatever, would you come home and go to the University of Miami? Maybe you can go to the medical school here. So I said to my mom, don't worry, mom, I got this. Now imagine this, I'm the fourth kid in the family. I've never paid for education before. But I heard of something called financial aid in the United States. How many of you are from the United States? We don't have that in South America. So that means that the government lends you money for you to go to school, and then you pay it back once you graduate. So my roommate was getting financial aid. I go to the financial aid office, and they said, I'm sorry, you don't qualify. Your parents made too much money. It's going to be at least two trimesters before you can give you any money. So I looked at all of my possessions, and this is a real test. Sometimes you're going to be tested financially. I looked at all my possessions, and guess the only thing that I owned that had any value? It was a car that my parents gave me at graduation. Brand new car, worth $17,000. So I went ahead and decided I'm going to sell this car. Didn't tell my parents, but it's the only thing I own. I got $7,800 after two weeks of driving around trying to find someone to give me more than that. And I paid my first two trimesters with that money. Then I graduated and I'm in practice, right? I mean, I want to go into practice. I realized that I got $1,000 in the bank account, but I want to go into practice, so I go into an executive suite. That means you pay month to month, and that's it. So it was less than $500 overhead. In my first month, we profited $3,800. Within the first year, we were almost a half a million, and then it kept growing from there. 
So the third lesson is this. You are your greatest investment. I can't tell you how many times I've seen that in successful people that they put their money in other things that have nothing to do with their passion and their purpose in life. When you're tested and right now you may be having right now a difficult decision to make, am I going to invest in me or am I going to give up my dream? I'm saying please invest in yourself. It's the greatest investment that you'll have. And then the last lesson was that once I went through school, I graduated for 10 years. I have one of the biggest practices in the United States. And then I get a phone call from the school that I graduated from with my mentor was the founder. He passed away. And the board said, we want you to be the next president. I said, I don't have any idea of anything in education. In the United States, the average new president of a college or university is 55 years old. Here I am, 31 years old. But they say, you're the one to do it. I say no for a year and a half. I'm not interested. I don't feel I'm ready. This is not for me. After a year and a half, and they interviewed 60 of the most prominent people in our profession, they tricked me into coming in to do an interview to find out which one of the 60 will be most likely to succeed. <laughs> After two hours of an interview, they called me two days later, and they said that they find their candidate and the only person that can do the job. I said, great, who is it? They said, it's you. <laughs> and we can't take no for an answer. So I told them if it was unanimous by the board, I will do it. And two days later, they called me and it was unanimous by the board. Never discuss money, never discuss anything except I will do it. I figured to myself, you know, I have my practice. They can't afford me. It pays not that much, but I'm going to help them because that's my alma mater. That was my mentor, and I want to give back to him for all that he gave me. Little did I was to know that at that time, my second day on the job, all the newscasts come in, and they think they want to interview me because I became the youngest president of a college or university in the United States at that time. This was 1999, 33 years old. As I'm then building this institution, which at that time, it was losing over $2 million in operational budget. It had millions of dollars in debt. It had buildings that needed to be remodeled. We had 1,200 students, and now we're down to 500. And when I get there, I find out that 350 of them had already requested to transfer to another university in, in a couple of months. That's a lot to handle at 33 years old. But I do what I always do. I make a commitment to something, and I follow through. I went around and told every student, just watch what I do. Trust in me. We're going to build this thing, and we're going to be just fine. I had to let go of 117 people my first month there because they were losing so much money because they were still operating like if they had 1,200 students. And it didn't make any financial sense. Within one year, we turned it around and we profited, profited $700,000. And we got them completely out of debt. Within the next 10 years, we put $42 million in the bank and we remodeled every building. We broke all the accreditation, uh, accreditation records. We had two perfect accreditations, which is hadn't happened in 33 years in the United States. All because you follow that purpose. And then as I'm doing this, I have a couple of friends of mine called Jack Canfield and Mark Victor Hanson. How many of you have heard of them? They're the founders of Chicken Soup. So we're lecturing in Las Vegas, and Mark invited me to dinner. And I said, Mark, how come you don't do a chicken soup book for the chiropractic soul? He said, Fab, we've had over 10,000 people request that from us. And I said, why haven't you done it? He said, because we haven't found anyone that's willing to commit to do it right. And here I go again. What if I do it? So what I did is that I went ahead and agreed to do that book. I went back home that next week. I emailed 300 chiropractors that were the most successful ones that I knew. And I asked them to introduce me to their patients that had tremendous results. And asked them if they would make that introduction so I could ask their patients to write me a story for Chicken Soup. We did that book in three months. Of, out, of, out of 550 million books that Chicken Soup has sold, that book was the fastest they've ever done out of 180 titles. Three months. We put it together in three months. And then what I did is that I said, okay, how am I going to market this? And I realized that in many states in the United States, you cannot advertise testimonials of your patients. It's against the law. 
So I said, here we have a great third party that has emotional stories. Why don't I go ahead and then use that and teach chiropractors to give that book to every one of their patients and then ask them which story inspire you and that way they're going to think of someone in their lives and they get new patients from it. Within two years and 10 programs, we never took it to the bookstores, we sold 376,000 copies. So the lesson there is this. Sometimes in life you're going to be confronted with a decision that's bigger than you. I have found that as an entrepreneur, I don't grow unless I get out of my comfort zone. Would you agree? Yes. And feel free to say yes, yes, because we love Lisa Nichols. Yes. <laughs> so I want you to understand that it's okay to get outside of your comfort zone and go ahead and put a plan together to go ahead and fulfill whatever come, came to you. If something comes to you, that means that you are the person that's actually designed to make that happen. And then the last thing that happened was, as I was going through this, then I write this last book called The Power of Self-Healing. So one of my patients for 14 years have been Dr. Phil. How many of you have seen that show? It's the number one TV show in daytime in America. And he's a psychologist. So I write this book and I send it to him and his wife as a gift. He called me two weeks later and said, I love the book, I wanna have you on my show. Now, I have never done national television. And this is the number one show, 14 million viewers. So he puts me on the show, and I could have said no, or I could have said yes, right? Yes. I said yes, because when offers like that come to you, you don't hesitate. You just get ready, and you do it. So I went on that show, and because of that, this book became an international bestseller. It's in eight languages right now. The paperback just came out, and uh, it's going to go into 22 languages. So who would like this book? So the next lesson in entrepreneurship, whether you want something or not, is whoever moves first gets it, right? So who wants this one? Okay. So that leads me to the topic today. Was that helpful? I mean, just some little information, some neat information that hopefully will get you reaffirm that the path that you're in is the right path. Listen, I promise you this. You will not be attracted to an energy like this unless you were meant to be part of it. Would you agree with me? Yes. Yes, yes. I mean, I never expected to meet amazing people like you, right? I wasn't expecting that because I have never been anywhere where I found people like you. The reason that I'm so enrolled in this vision of Awesomeness Fest, the reason that I'm here, the reason that all of us are here is because we all want to grow, right? We all want to do better. So if we want to do better, where do we go to be nurtured and to be reaffirmed that we're in the right path? Because most of us are surrounding ourselves with people that are doubting our potential. Are you there? Yes. Yes. That happens to all of us, whether personally or professionally. So the topic of self-healing is my last 25 years of researching all the different modalities and what really helps us heal from the inside out. But this is what I've learned is that we have been sold a lie. We have been sold a lie that says that our bodies only heal from the outside in. That unless I take this prescription, unless I get this injection, unless I get this surgical procedure, my body cannot heal naturally. I have found that to be absolutely opposite to the truth. The truth is that the only thing that heals is the body itself. The truth is that your body was designed to heal everything known to man. And every condition known to man has healed at one point or another somewhere in the world. But why doesn't it do it all the time? That was my question. I wanted to know why. So I became a, a chiropractor by profession. Then I studied acupuncture. Then I started studying all the healing arts, energy medicine, nutrition, everything. And I started understanding that there was so much to the story that I was never told in school. And that's what I want to share with you right now. I want to share with you that the reason that this system is, not, is broken, and I'm talking about the healthcare system, is because we have a sick care system. Yes. Yes, yes. We don't have a healthcare system. The only time you come into the healthcare system is when you already have symptoms. Symptoms are the alarm of the body just letting you know, hey, I need some help because you're not taking care of me. So I want you to understand that once you enter that system, you're already 
pass many of the opportunities where you could actually have helped yourself here, heal. The truth is the fact that we are bankrupt. Did you know that in the United States, Harvard University did a study two years ago that over 50% of personal bankruptcies, personal bankruptcies, were because of health issues. 50%, over 50%. Did you know that Starbucks spends more money on healthcare than they do on the coffee that they sell you? That's happening to most companies out there. The healthcare crisis is all over the place. We're spending about $7,000 for every individual of the family to be able to have health care. Now, I know some of you are coming into, from systems that are uh, systems that the government pays for your health care. What I'm here to tell you is that no one can take care of your health except for you. And if you continue to wait that way, then study, let's look at the statistics. Over 80% of our health care problems are chronic illnesses, that the cause of the chronic illnesses is our lifestyle choices. Our lifestyle choices. So what I did is that I wanted to share with you a couple of the models that are changing the way that medicine is going to be in the future. I'm going to share with you three models that you're going to be hearing, and I want you to understand these words because you're going to be seeing a lot more of them in the writings and the articles and the interviews that you're going to be seeing out there. The first one is prevention. Everything is moving more towards prevention because it's a lot less expensive to prevent an, illnesses, an illness than to try to fix it once it's there. And prevention is all about empowerment of you. It's a responsibility to say, you know what? I'm only giving one body. I can change my house. I can tear down my car. I can actually not even take care of my office. I can move buildings. I cannot change my body. I cannot live in your body. I want to when I'm not feeling pretty good, but I can't. It's my only body. And the interesting thing, this is a reminder that I want to give you because, look, this, all I'm going to say to you is simple. I'm just going to bring it to you in such a simple way for you to understand that you already have everything you need to be the healthiest individual that you can because your health impacts every area of your life. It's the one thing that is the number one priority of most millionaires or billionaires that I ask. What is the one thing you value the most? For 25 years, I have interviewed patients. 25 years. Tell me the three most valuable things in your life. Health has only been around for 12% of them. That's one of those three. The top ones are faith, family, and, and purpose of work. Now, some people put sometimes golf, you know, my car, or whatever. But I want you to understand that that word prevention is going to be very permanent. The second one is a word called epigenetics. Have you heard of that word? Epigenetics is a new science that is actually showing us because in the 80s and 90s, we spent hundreds of thousands of millions of dollars to be able to learn what genes can do. And now the new science is saying that the genes are only a predisposition. That means that only has the ability to express itself in a certain way. If your father was bald and you feel you're going to lose your hair, you only have a predisposition of doing that. If your mother had breast cancer, you only have a predisposition of doing that. Epigenetics is a science that is teaching us that the environment around the cell actually changes the gene within the cell. That means that no longer are you susceptible to the illnesses of your history. See, as a doctor, they train us that the first thing we do is we're going to take a history. We want to find out if there's heart disease in your family, if there's cancer, whatever. Nowadays, you don't have to, but guess what? What you do have to understand is that if you continue to think the way that your parents thought, and if you continue to behave that the way they did, chances are you're going to have that gene be activated, and that's what you're going to end up like. So epigenetics, pay attention to that word. That just brings awareness to our environment. And the last one is a, is a, is a neurology word called neuroplasticity. How many of you have heard that word? Neuroplasticity is actually changing the way that we actually view ourselves. Because for many years, we have known like, things like meditations were very effective. But now we actually have science that says that when you visualize something, right? When you visualize something, when you get that feeling of something, that actually creates new pathways in your brain, new neurons, new synapses. That are, and now we can actually see them, see them on a scan. So I want everybody right now to please close your eyes. And I, just, I want you to just breathe in and out. And I want you to envision 
being in a race. How many of you have ever done a race before, whether it's 5K, 10K, 25K? Okay, perfect. So just pretend that if you've never been on a race, you're on a race. Now, the largest race in the world is the New York Marathon. It has over 55,000 people racing, over 55,000. But the race that we're going to go on a journey right now, it's got 300 million people running it, right? That race, you're one of those 300 million. And you're right now looking around, just seeing all the people around, and everybody wants that prize at the end. And you're going to be running, and you're going to be rushing, everybody competing, pushing around and everything, but no, you're going to be there. So what I want you to understand is this. You're an individual like no one else. Your body was created in a perfect, perfect state of being. It's up to you to nourish that. It's up to you to protect that. So here you are running, right? And you're rushing. And you get into the end. And guess what the price is? Life. Did you know that you have over 300 million sperms racing to fertilize that egg? And only one makes it, right? That sperm, that race, that person is you. Because that is the intelligence that actually allows you to be here with us today. And that same intelligence actually that lives within you is the one that's running everything in your body. It's the one that reminds you to breathe. It's the one that reminds you to digest your foods. It's the one that reminds you to make sure that you produce enough energy. It's the one that, the one that sets your body for a state of homeostasis or balance. That innate intelligence, which is the scientific world that we use, it's the most, it's the biggest miracle ever discovered. That's you. Right now, that's you. That's the spirit of entrepreneurship. That spirit that is not going to give up, even though you had 300 million people running, pushing you around, trying to get to that egg. That's you. Okay, open up your eyes. So now I'm going to give you some of the things that very briefly, I'm going to give you just a few things that are going to allow you to understand now what are the systems that we discover over 25 years that help you heal. The first one is what you eat, you become what you eat. So pay attention to your nutrition. It's very important that you pay attention to that nutrition. Yes, yes. Thank you. The second one is exercise and movement. More research today has shown that exercise is one of the best anti-aging things that you can do. It lowers blood pressure. It increases circulation. It allows your body to function better, not more than just for fitness. And the next one is to make sure that you integrate alternative medicine into your, into your lifestyle. Try chiropractic, massage, acupuncture, homeopathy, naturopathy, all of the things that are out there that have been proven to actually help you. On an emotional level, the things that we have found to help you the most is your mindset, is the way you think. You know, my first introduction to this world was the silver method. And I started at 19 years old. Thank you, Laura. But I want you to write this down. There are three emotions that actually help you heal faster than anything else. The first one is forgiveness. The second one is gratitude. And the third one is love, especially unconditional love. And the last one is your spiritual self-healing. This is a self-healing method system that I'm sharing with you. And that is meditation. The next one is connection, connection with others, just like we're all doing right here. And the next one is actually having a purpose that's bigger than you. Having a compassion to serve that's greater than your compulsion to survive. So I'll wrap it up with this story. A patient came in, her name was Rosie. 350 pounds. She comes into my office just desperate. I could tell she was suffering. Her husband was trying to get her through our doors into the office. My office manager puts her in the room and said, you better go see this lady. She's in a lot of pain. So I said, Rosie, how can we help you today? She started telling me her history. About 20 years of suffering, fibromyalgia, reflex sympathetic syndrome, all kinds of diagnosis. She's taking 27 pills a day. She's in pain. She had to give up her work after three years, I mean, three years ago. Her husband and her are not getting along because she can't be the wife she, the wife she wants to be. Every time he gets close to her, he, she pushes him away. 
She's sleeping an average of two hours a night. Rose is having a difficult time. I accepted Rosie as a patient because I believe that that power, that intelligence that I told you about, can create miracles if we expect miracles. So I began to teach her how to love herself even though she was only looking at herself as a disease. I began to teach her how to begin to look at herself as this amazing individual that she really is. She started doing some meditation. She started changing her nutritional habits. She started getting acupuncture, chiropractic. Within six months, her pain was gone by 50%. Within a year, she was completely pain-free. Now, her husband got transferred, so I lost touch with her. She calls me about five years later, and she says, Dr. Mancini, I want to thank you. And I said, Rosie, you've already thanked me so much. You refer so many patients. You're always so nice. You're always on time. You always pay on time. And she said, Dr. Mancini, I want to thank you. You know that I have my life back because of chiropractic, because of you. You know, right now, I lost over 200 pounds since you last saw me. I'm working in the job of my dreams. My husband and I are doing better than ever. My kids love me when before I couldn't be there for them. But Dr. Mancini, I'm calling to thank you for saving my life. And I said, what do you mean, Rosie? He said, what I didn't tell you is that a week before I went into your office, I actually had bought a gun. And I had decided to kill myself. If you weren't going to be able to help me, that was it for me. I had it. Too many years of suffering. I'm calling you right now to tell you thank you for saving my life. I'm sharing that story because I don't want you to lose sense that there's a lot of roses out there. You may be a rosy right now. You may be somebody that's struggling so much, and I'm here to tell you that all the science is supporting the fact that your body can heal anything. Given the right conditions, accessing your body, your mind, and your spirit your body can heal anything. And when you access that entrepreneurship intelligence of innate intelligence, when you access that every single day, you have an opportunity to actually live the life of your dreams, to have everything you want, happiness, you know, to have a great physical body, to have a, a peaceful state of mind, to have energy, abundant energy. And that's my message today. So God bless you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you. <laughs>